Hello, America. I'm Mark Levin, and this is Life, Liberty, and Levin Saturday. You know, something is playing out in our country and our politics that's very, very important. It actually goes beyond Israel and Judaism and the horrors of Hamas and so forth. It's the Democrat Party. If you criticize the Democrat Party, you will be attacked as a racist, as an anti-Semite, as a bigot, as a homophobe, or whatever it is. The Democrat Party, as I've demonstrated the last few weekends, is a totalitarian party. That's the mindset, to try and imprison their political opponents, to try and uh, trigger a coup against people they disagree with and say Israel, wide open borders, the purpose of which is to change the citizenry to accommodate the Democrat Party's agenda, and on and on and on. Now, we have a situation here in America which has played out right in front of our eyes over the last six months. And that is, since the Israelis were attacked on October 7th by subhuman terrorists who call themselves Hamas, Israel has come under attack diplomatically, publicly, economically, and even militarily now, not by the United States of America, but by the Democrat Party that runs the executive branch and pretty much the media, that is the Democrat Party. And what are they doing? Well, I'll tell you what they're doing. First of all, was Donald Trump right? Was he right when he said, if you're Jewish, basically, you vote for Democrats, you're voting against yourself? You're voting for anti-Semitism, you're voting against Israel? Really? What was so wrong with that statement? I've said it myself, so have other conservatives and patriots who see what's taking place. You literally are going to have people standing in line, Jewish people, behind other people who are talking about river to the sea and the obliteration of, of uh, Israel, voting for the same candidate. How can that be? And so when you point it out, all of a sudden, oh, you're entertaining an anti-Semitic trope. No, we're not. We're calling out anti-Semitism in the Democrat Party. The Democrat Party is a history of racism, bigotry, eugenics. It has a history of attacking minorities all through most of its history. Slavery, segregation, separate but equal. And then it wants to claim that it's the savior party. All those segregationists were Democrats. All those filibusters led by Democrats and supported in many respects by their current president, Joe Biden. So I want to really drill down on this. Let's start. Was, was Donald Trump right? You damn well he was right. Washington Post, Biden imposes sanctions on Israeli West Bank settlers. He doesn't put sanctions on any Palestinians who are slaughtering Jews, committing acts of terrorism, no. Or anywhere else in the world. On China, with the Uyghurs? On Russia, with the Chechnyans? And we can go all over the world. No, just the Jews in Judea and Samaria. Why? Because he wants them out of there, that's why. Senate Democrats eye Israel conditions and latest defense package snarl. What's that all about? The Senate Democrats are prepared to cut off Israel as it fights for its very survival. Cut off Israel. Does that sound like they're pro-Israel? Here we have another one, Reuters. U.S. Senate Democrats block Republican bid to aid Israel, not Ukraine. So the Republicans say, let's just fund support for Israel so they have their armaments. The Democrats in the Senate, following Biden's lead, say no. The Biden administration is investigating Israel's, Israel's possible war crimes, despite public claims to the contrary. Here it is, in one of the most rapidly left-wing news sites, the Huffington Post. War crimes? Israel? Yes. How the Gaza Ministry of Health fakes casualty numbers. We had that gentleman, the professor, on this program last week. They lie about their casualty numbers. They're a terrorist organization. They're a propaganda organization. And yet, as the New York Post points out, Hamas's Gaza death toll stats are pure fiction, yet world media and leaders like Joe Biden still use them to smear Israel. Why is Joe Biden using provably false Hamas statistics to paint Israel as the aggressor, trying to kill Gazan civilians? Why is Joe Biden doing that? Why are the Democrats doing it? Why are the American media doing it? Here we have Biden administration reportedly is now delaying arms shipments to Israel. Now we have... Oh, but most of the Palestinians want peace with Israel. We got to have this two-state solution. We're going to moderate Palestinians and so forth. No, actually, most of them are not, according to surveys done by Arab organizations and Palestinian organizations over and over again. The latest one I found was from the other day, poll. 
Over 70 percent Palestinians still maintain Hamas was correct to commit October 7th atrocities. Oh, mostly peaceful, huh? Jerusalem Post, an editorial, which is a left-of-center newspaper in Israel. No, Joe Biden, most Palestinians support Hamas, survey after survey. Oh, but we'll create this second country because we'll make sure. Biden presses Netanyahu, working toward a Palestinian state. He's been doing this for decades, despite the fact, what I just showed you, that in the culture of, of that community, of that group of, of uh, individuals, they don't want to live side by side in peace, and they've had a hundred opportunities to do it. This is the reality. But Joe Biden doesn't care. He is prepared to carve up Israel. He is prepared to stop Israel from defeating Hamas. Joe Biden is the biggest propagandist and special pleader for the enemy. This is between good and evil, and he's siding with evil. The verdict on Schumer, the New York Sun. Schumer has been widely condemned, even in liberal Jewish organizations and communities. That speech he gave on the Senate floor, the Democrat leader in the Senate, the Democrat majority leader, the highest ranking Jewish person in Congress, gave one of the most horrendous, anti-Semitic, anti-Israel speeches in the history of the Senate, which is now being repeated and used by the terrorists and other enemies of Israel, both overseas and in our country. They're citing Schumer. He gave them cover. Now, what just happened? 19 Senate Democrats, you can see, urged Biden to publicize framework for establishing Palestinian state. So don't defeat Hamas, lose to Hamas. Don't stop Iran and their nuclear weapon. Create a new country, which will be populated by the very elements that are trying to destroy Israel, because they will, they'll take it over regardless, will be an Iranian puppet state. And now 19 Democrats, because you see Schumer opened the door to the whole thing. They're saying, let's do a framework. Chuck Schumer, Chuck Schumer says, I'm very balanced about these things, NBC News. Chuck Schumer rejects Netanyahu's request to talk to the Democrats as Israeli leaders addresses the Republicans. You notice the Republicans are not doing any of this other than trying to support and defend Israel. The Daily Mail, Biden calls Israeli leader Benjamin Netanyahu a bad effing guy in latest foul mouth tirade from 81-year-old president. He's been doing this for 20 years because Netanyahu will not agree to a two-state solution. This is what Biden is doing. Now, does it sound like that party is pro-Israel? Does it? Biden administration officially turns on Israel because it has. The Biden administration's anti-Semitism blind spot. We have rabid anti-Semitism going on in this country. We have a Chabad synagogue that was destroyed. We have Jewish grocery stores that are, this is going on every day. We have Jewish kids in colleges still scared to death. There's surveys on that. Has Biden even given a speech about this? No. Has he made this an issue? No. He sends his senior advisors to Dearborn, Michigan, he sends them to parts of New Jersey, he sends them to parts of California where there are concentrations of Muslims and Arabs to beg them to vote for him, to beg them. Has he criticized the colleges and universities, hundreds of them, that are allowing anti-Semitism to spread on their college campuses? He did? When? When? The guy mumbles about everything else. What did he do? He did nothing. What else? Anti-Semitism reaching historic levels in the United States in the Biden administration, under Joe Biden. Gee, I wonder why. This is the New York Post. Anti-Semitism is reaching historic levels in the U.S. following the October 7 attack on Israel by Hamas. Christopher Wray, FBI director, said this is a threat that is reaching in some way sort of historic levels in part because, as you know all too well, the Jewish community is targeted by terrorists really across the spectrum. The FBI director noted that the Bureau's statistics show that Jewish Americans are disproportionately the victims of hate crimes, including the majority of religious-based attacks. In fact, he said, our statistics would indicate that for a group that represents only 2.4 percent of American public, they account for something like 60% of all religious-based hate crimes. What does Biden say? Islamophobia. He's worried about Islamophobia. Well, let me tell you something, Biden. There is no systemic Islamophobia in America. It exists in Iran, where your buddies are, and all throughout the Middle East, where Muslims are slaughtering Muslims, not in America. Look at this, Gallup poll. Democrats' sympathies in the Middle East shift to Palestinians. Look at this, Michigan, Friday, sermon by Imam Abdul Zanani. One day the Muslims will slaughter the Jews like sheep. 
Oh, Allah, make us soldiers for you. Make us die the way you want us to die. This is all over the internet. Memory is the greatest place. What's the FBI doing about this? What's INS, the old INS, doing about this? What did Biden say about this? No, they're attacking Trump. They didn't say a word. What about this one? Friday sermon by Florida Imam, Dr. Fadi Kablawi. Oh, Allah, make this Ramadan a blessed month of victory. By Allah, we will seize, enjoy, live in the Jewish settlements. We will inherit the land, homes, property of the Jews. Right here. What do you hear from our courageous leader, Joe Biden? You don't hear a damn thing. Well, Donald Trump sees all this. He's watching it. He's reading it. He's hearing it. And he says in a radio interview to my buddy, Sebastian Gorka, and I paraphrase, why would the Jewish people vote for a party like this or vote for a candidate like this who have turned on Israel and are doing very little, if anything, about anti-Semitism? This is coming from a man who the Israelis believe was the greatest American president to help Israel. And he did it in hundreds of ways. He went after Iran. He went after the terrorists and the PLO. He cut them off financially. They were in a box. Iran was collapsing. He threw out funding for UNRWA because he saw what that was doing too. He put in place the Teller Force Law, which prevented any American money going to the PLO as long as they continued to support terrorism and use that money to give pensions to the families of terrorists. He did so many things, the Abraham Accords, and on and on and on. And now they dare call him an anti-Semite because Dana Bash and Chuck Schumer's effort to divert attention let me explain something to Dana Bash and Chuck Schumer and reprobates of their sort. We don't owe loyalty to the Democrat Party. None of us. Why the hell would we? Whether you're Jewish or black, the history of the Democrat Party is one of evil. It's one of racism. It's one of segregation. It's one of anti-Semitism, limiting the number of Jews who could come to the United States in the 1930s and 40s who wound up in gas chambers. They don't get to rewrite American history. We get to push back. When Donald Trump says, wait a minute, why would you vote for a Democrat party given what they're doing? And I just showed you just a little bit of it, how they obviously have turned on Israel and are betraying Israel, and in our own country are embracing, promoting, and seeking the votes of people who listen, not all people, but too many people, the river to the sea, the people carrying the flags with the swastika, the people going into the mosque where these imams <clears throat> in the United States of America are preaching, are preaching the extinction of Jews in the United States and elsewhere. He's sending senior advisors to get votes in these various areas. And he turns on Israel, betrays Israel, undermines Netanyahu publicly. What do you think Hamas thinks of this or Iran? They love it. Why? Because here's the truth. We talked about it before, so I won't belabor the point from the tablet. The realignment by Michael Duran and Tony Badron. Page after page of what Obama wanted, Blinken who worked for Obama, now Biden who worked with Obama. What did they do? They came into office. What did they do? They removed sanctions on Iran's energy sector, automotive industry, financial services, banking industry, and ports to eliminate, in other words, all the most significant economic sanctions ever imposed on Iran by Donald Trump. Well, why did they do that? The president's ultimate goal, wrote Malley, this is the guy now who's under investigation for violating our classified documents laws was to help the Middle East find a more stable balance of power that would make it less dependent on direct U.S. interference or protection. And how do they plan to do that, America? Build up Iran, who they never, they never badmouth, who they never attack, even though they killed three of our soldiers, who are funding all this. Biden's funding Iran. Here, another piece. Iran sponsored the October 7 massacre. America paid for it. By that, they mean Biden. Iran has actually received more money than Ukraine as a result of Biden's direct an indirect agreement to fund that regime. And at the same time, they were attacking Benjamin Netanyahu, publicly and privately. Another $10 billion flowed into Iran. The Democrat Party is not only betraying America, it's not only betraying the black community, the Hispanic community, the Asian community, and all other communities. Look, America. Listen, America, every day, they're betraying Israel and betraying the Jews. We used to say never again. Well, apparently, it's again. They have all these little crystal knocks going on in the United States of America. 
and Joe Biden's begging for votes in communities that hate the state of Israel. That's what he's doing. If you're Jewish and you vote Democrat for Schumer or Bernie Sanders, or you vote for an AOC or a Talib or a party, an organization that has made its position known despite the best efforts of its propagandists in the media, you're destroying yourselves. You're destroying this country. You're destroying other countries, including the country of Israel. Now, right away, I have a grand old time, and I'm sticking to it, because facts are facts, and you gotta stand up to tyranny when it's taking place and swirling all around you. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News' YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.